I'm Shirley Carrier from Atlanta, Georgia, and I'm a food writer and speaker, and uh, uh, I was a research biochemist for the Vanderbilt Medical School a million years ago. And uh, then along the way, my former husband and I opened a boys' boarding school, and I, at the high point, fed 140 teenage boys three meals a day. <laughs> this was trial by fire. I did not know how to cook. <laughs> you know, I was a chemist for heaven's sakes. And I remember I just went crazy the scrambling eggs. See, this was in the 50s before non-stick pans. And it was just with fear and trembling that I would crack a dozen eggs in this big old frying pan and then I would move it over and turn on the heat and take a big spatula and scrape, 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 scrape. And I just had this horrible, stuck, knotty mess because what I had done was put liquid protein in this big old pan and then I had put it on the heat so that I was literally cooking the eggs down into the pan. You talk about stuck, it was just inconceivable. But that secret is to heat the empty pan first so your food has a hot surface to cook on, not down in. I have two cookbooks, Cookwise and Bakewise. Cookwise was just instantly successful. They sold out of the first printing, which was big, uh, 70,000 or more copies, before the book got to the store. But it was over 500,000 copies that I had sold about four or five years ago. So if you understand what is happening and what is wrong, you can fix it. For example, if your cake is heavy, your first instinct is, I need more baking powder. But guess what? It may be just the opposite. If you have too much leavening, and this is the biggest problem across baking, and it comes from recipes in very good cookbooks, but there will be too much leavener. The bubbles get big, big, big. They get huge. They run into each other. They float to the top and pop. And there goes your leavening, and there goes your cake. Your cake sinks. So um, the rule is very simple. One teaspoon baking powder per cup of flour. That's what I stick to. You can go as far as one and one fourth teaspoon of baking powder per cup of flour, but that's an absolute max. You're gonna lose volume from there. And baking soda, it's the potent stuff. It's the part of baking powder. That's the active ingredient. And so only one fourth of a teaspoon of baking soda per cup of flour. Knowing a tiny bit of chemistry can save you so much grief in the kitchen. <laughs>